Divine Moon Goddess, bam, bam. It's your Divine Moon Goddess coming at you with a little bit of tarot. All right, you guys, we are looking at May. Uh, Cancer's in the building. Cancer, let's see what's going on with you in May. We're going to do the wheel. If you've been, um, if you're new to my channel, then welcome, welcome. If you are a return person, you kind of know how I do the monthly wheel. Look at all your houses, see what's going on and all. Um, if you don't understand what the houses mean, we all have houses in our chart. Every zodiac um, rules a house, whether it's your finances, collaboration, love, romance, lo whatever, whatever, right? We're going to go through the 12 houses and of your sign, you know, I don't want to say it like that. That's going to be confusing. Anywho, I'll walk you through it if you're new. <laughs> All uh, others of you, you get to just roll. And I'm going to give an added uh, oracle card today for you guys. So Cancer, this is for you. Just an added message for today of what the energy. Oh, you got angel. So some of you have past loved ones around you as well as angel assistance. Um, for some of you, and you know who you are. As soon as I seen this, I heard, yeah, my y'all. Boo, you already know who you are watching that. Ooh, I love it. All right. Let's get into it. We're going to see what's um, happening this month for you. And um, I'm going to use uh, the Rider Waite and the Kipper. And I'm going to go two rounds. And then the third round, I will go into the extended. So if you're liking what you're hearing, if it's resonating with you and you want to know more, then you will meet me in the extended. That will be in the link in the bottom. And we will go from there. All right. So let's go ahead and get into it. And Cancer, let's see what's coming towards you for May. What is going on coming towards you for May? Let's see. And it's not just the bad things. And I don't just look at love. I look at everything. So career, those of you who don't want to hear about love, you'll hear about your money. All right. But then, of course... Uh, those of you going through it in love will also hear that. Whoever I'm connecting with, um, your stories will unfold and you will hear it. So um, if it sounds like your story, if it's giving you something, um, like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Um, and um, hopefully you come back and you watch me again. Don't allow tarot to be an addiction though, okay? Um, it's one thing to come for guidance when you need it, but don't let it be an addiction. As much as I love you guys supporting me and watching all my videos and sharing me out, I also don't want you to be addicted to tarot in that way. I'm always trying to, you know, watch, go listen to your cross watcher. I mean, go listen to their sign, somebody else's sign. Listen to yours. If, if it's needed to be said, It'll be set in your sign. And, and you can look in your sun sign, moon sign, rising sign, shit, Mercury sign. Um, look at yours because it'll come out. You don't need to look at anybody else's um, to get clarity. That just gives you more confusion. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got going on, uh, Cancer. So first house, which is ruled by uh, Aries, okay, which is the king of cups, water sign energy, but it doesn't have to be water sign energy. This is someone who's very intense. Um, I feel like this is for someone who may have a lot of love with you. But if we're looking at just you and your house, the house of self, Aries rules the house of self. You're maturing in your emotions. Bravo, fucking cancer. <laughs> the biggest thing about this is maturing in your emotions and allowing yourself not to let your emotions run you. And cancer, that has been one of your biggest things to work on in this life. Not allowing your emotions to run every decision, every moment, and you stay in that. So first house, so maturing in your energy. Yes, it could be someone you're dealing with, but let's stay with um, you for a second and we'll see how that transpires with the next card that comes out for you. But this is about self. This is maturity. This is going to that next level. It's a balance of emotions that I feel is very beautiful. There's also something very intensifying with your energy. So this could be your psychic abilities. Um, this could be just stepping into a spiritual career, um, but the intensity of your vibe, a lot of people are not going to be able to rock with you. Okay. Um, your second house, which is the house of Taurus, um, house, uh, this house rules everything to do with finances in the material world, your bank account, your, uh, debt credit, um, what you own, um, your, your, not your career, but what you make in a sense from that, what you save, 
Um, all of that stuff when it comes what you value. Cancer, your own energy is coming out here with the chariot card. You're going to be making some moves when it comes to the second house. So this is a huge, this is a major arcana also. So the month of May is going to be huge. Just make sure that you don't feel like you're in competition with anybody, okay? Because unfortunately, this card, as well as we want to keep it as a good card, it also has this soldier kind of vibe to it where you want to prove and show people that you got it. That's not the way to get it. Okay, Cancer, don't show or prove to anybody that you're going to make it. Prove it to yourself. Don't prove it to nobody else because they're actually not worth the fucking energy. Okay? Third house, which is the house of Gemini. Um, Gemini rules the house of communication, uh, how we send messages, messages from beyond, downloads, all of that good stuff, technology, but it's not really the inventions, it's technology in itself. You have the seven of pentacles, excuse me. Some of you could have been working in technology or had a had a technical career. I feel like that is over or it's, it's not working out for you. There's something the way that you communicate also that needs to change. Seven of pentacles means that you're not evolving in your communication skills. So that means that um, the way either you message or receive, it could be the receiving end of a message also. Maybe you do talk or communicate, but maybe you receive something and instead of really hearing it, you hear what you want to hear. There's something like that here, Cancer, that you need to take a step back and kind of look at. The Seven of Pentacles means something's not, not uh, moving, something's not agreeing, something is not working out here, especially if you have any business with technology or tech, technical um even if you like work in the mail room, shit, I just feel like it's not working. Fourth house, which is your house, Cancer, you have the Ace of Wands. So this is the house of not only the mother, mothering, our children, our mom. Um, this is also the house of our soul. So your soul desires are coming out here, Cancer, when it comes to the month of May. And so Ace of Wands are bringing some new beginnings. Now, yes, this is a very sexual card. So somebody could be getting it in in the month of May. But this is 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 really this fire. And I feel more soul desire versus anything else. For some of you, it's this internal flame that is connected to your soul that some of you guys don't understand. It's connected to this King of Cups. But we'll go back there in a moment. Um, for some of you, it's just the recognition of what this is and understanding what this is, okay? Fifth house, which is the house ruled by Leo, which is everything to do with um, our entertainment, our, our what do we do socially, um, our hobbies, our, our children, procreation, okay? It's a masculine force. It's ruled by the sun. Um, so this is like the, the yin and the yang. Cancer is like the, the yin, which I think is the feminine side and the yang, which is the masculine side, or it could be the other way, because I'm always fucking confusing them. They should have had different names. <laughs> but the, the Leo part is that, so some of you guys could be getting pregnant. Um, some of you guys could be getting knocked up or knocking somebody else up with this energy right here. Um, but I do feel like there's completion here. For some of you, if you are in social media, I do feel like there's some achievement, because this is the, uh, this is the house of... Um, like status. This is the house of, of um, famous, you know, being famous and people knowing you. So there's something changing about who you are or people knowing you more. There's an achievement and a level up for some of you guys. Some of you guys there, because this is the yawning, um, this wreath around the woman represents the woman's yawning, which is the uterus um, or, or, um, ovaries, something like that. And I don't know if there's a repair. I don't know. There's something about that that happens, whether this is a repair, whether this is a um, healing that happened. I don't know. It's crazy. This is like out of this world. This is like one person's fucking situation. Um, there's something about that. There's a womb healing also for some of you guys. Look into that. I'm getting more and more into womb healing myself. Um, I will start to offer it soon. So those of you guys who know me, go to the website. Information is in the description. I don't just do tarot. I'm an energetic healer. Um, and I do push healing because if you stay in the same energy, you will never get to the life that you want. So we have to heal on all levels, okay? Sixth house, which is the house of, uh, ruled by uh, Virgo, you got the star card. 
Woo, beautiful fucking energy, okay? Um, this is restoration after a tower. Um, now, remember, Virgo uh, rules the house of your routine, your everyday life. So you had a shakeup in your everyday life. Something drastically changed in your everyday world. And this is the repair and restoration afterwards. Um, Virgo is also your health. So some of you guys, like I said, I do feel, you know, there could be some health issues here um, that have been worked out. And I do like it. It's a beautiful thing because it does feel like um, something has changed. And, you know, this is also what you do for money, like, you know, your daily work towards money. And so some of you guys, like I said, some of you guys are going to be famous. Some of you guys are going to be well known for what you do for work and how that transpires for you. So just know that. OK, uh, the seventh house, which is the house of Libra, um, it rules over partnerships, legalities, uh, contracts relationships, uh, whether love or friends or whatever, high priestess is coming out. So there's a lot of shit you don't see coming towards you in this house. We're definitely going to look into that and see what's going on because I feel like, yes, a lot of it you don't know, but of course, a lot of it you don't see. And being that high priestess is right across from this king of cups, there's somebody that you don't see coming towards you in May. Mm. Okay, cancer. <laughs> Excuse me. The eighth house, which is the house of um, Scorpio, it rules an intense house. The house of Scorpio is, is like sudden death and shit. Um, this house is intense. It's death and rebirth. It's a sexual house also. But Wheel of Fortune in the reverse, some of y'all may not be getting as busy as I thought. Wheel of Fortune brings like the tower energy when it's in this house for me because it's shit that you just, it, it's shit that comes and you're just like, what the fuck is happening? right? Like what is happening, and especially your money right here, something has got to change. <laughs> in the month of May, you're going to feel it, especially financially. It's not going to feel good either, but you will be okay. Remember that. You're going to feel it very hard. Wheel of Fortune, you're getting some, you're getting hit by some shit, and that death energy is, is changing some shit. Some shit had to end, has to end for you to move forward, and so that's the kind of energy you're going to be dealing with. Things have to die to be reborn. The ninth house, which is ruled by Sagittarius, um, this is your house of your adventure, your uh, schooling, your religious belief systems, belief systems, period, traditions, um, adventure. I think I said that philosophy. Uh, there's a lot that goes on in this house. We got the page of swords here. So there's somebody either you're blocked or you block somebody else because I feel like there's no communication in this particular system. Um, I think somebody could have challenged your belief systems or you could have challenged somebody else's belief systems. Um, I also feel like what you knew or what you hold dear could have been challenged. So there's a break in communication here, or at least we're definitely not fucking speaking, okay? 10th house, which is uh, ruled by Capricorn. Uh, Capricorn is the um, house of career, your social status in that career, right? And it's also your ambitions. So five of cups in the reverse seems like you're coming out of maybe a very disappointing, uh, something that happened in your career. Remember, I feel like either someone got fired or you left a job or, you know, something happened. So there was a lot of sadness about uh, loss of money, loss of work. And I do feel like you're going to be coming out of that. We will see where that goes to see what are your possibilities coming up for you, Cancer, because I do feel like things are going to change. The 11th house, which is the house of Aquarius, it rules the house of the collective, your connection to the collective. It also rules the house of friends. It also rules the house of your social circles, um, as well as inventions, ideas, um, Nine of Cups is here. You may have someone who's a friend of yours that may express love to you, and that might catch you off guard All because there's some secret, secret love here. So I kind of feel like somebody that's a friend may catch you off guard that you're like, oh, I didn't even know that you liked me. And this person is expressing this for you. This person has deeper love than what they're telling you. So, you know, let them play those roles. <laughs> Um, the house of Pisces, which is the 12th house, just as in reverse, what you don't see coming to you is that there is a situation that may feel unfair, but unfortunately, I feel what you don't realize is, is that justice is not on your side. You may think that you were righteous in your decision of whatever you did, or maybe it's the other way we're going to see, does this fall on you? Does this fall on the other person? Sometimes we do try to justify our actions, but then uh, spirit kind of shows us that we were wrong. 
I think what you don't see is you do have karma. You got the Wheel of Fortune in reverse and the Justice in reverse. I do feel like there's a sense of karma coming back at you. Um, there's some things that you have not done to the integrity or morality of your true being. And I say your true being because what I, my morality or what I feel like is different from everybody else's. So it's what you and your creator designed as your morality or your integrity. Somebody's gone against that. So definitely going to be feeling that in the month of of March. And we will get a little bit deeper to see what is that justice card. Because again, I do feel like um, loss of wages, loss of work, um, justice it could be court. You could have a court uh, issue coming up that you don't see. And I don't think it's going to go in your favor though. So if you got court coming up, I don't think it's going to go in your favor, um, but we're going to see. Overall energy of the month coming out, Knight of Pentacles. So it's not as bad as you think. All right. Not as bad as you think. Um, coming out. You do have some opportunities here for the month of May. Um, so let's get the Kipper deck and go around and see uh, what's going on for you. And then, I, like I said, the third one where I clarify even deeper will be in the extended. So you can look at the description. You can click on the extended and meet me over there to see um, how far we go into. Because some of these I do need to clarify uh, deeper just to see what's going on. So Let's see what's going on with this uh, first placement, uh, the Aries house. Aries house has two cards coming out. Oof, we got the thief card and we got the court card. I don't like that. So someone could be, I'm telling you, someone's hiding their emotions and feelings about you, okay? Somebody is not telling you how they truly feel about you. You're going to see that. Somebody's going to make it official, though. I don't think they can hold back very, much, very long. I don't think this person is going to be able to not express how they truly feel. And I feel someone's going to make it official. It's it, They're telling me this time, this time, this person's going to make it official. Um, I am going to, in the in the um, extended, I'm going to go in more just to see what this thief, I don't like the thief card because it's still holding back or lying. This person may come to you. Maybe they don't tell you the whole truth either, which I don't like that. So we'll get into that and see what's coming. Um, if you're dealing with an Aries, I be careful because even though I have the official courthouse card. Again, I also feel like this person could not tell you the full truth. And if you have a court case going on with an Aries, again, I feel like someone is either going to try to lie against you. Um, also, you could get served some papers in the month of May also. So be careful with that. It just feels, I'm definitely going to have to clarify that in the extended. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see the second house. I know one flipped over. Yep. Second house is the house of Taurus. See, I'm telling you, whoever is going through a custody uh, issue or any court case, you kind of be going through it. Your assets are being challenged also. Some of you guys are really getting challenged on the assets here. Um, hmm. Like I said, be careful. We'll go into it a little bit more because there's a lot of mediation. So we may not even get an actual judgment in the month of May. It might just keep going to mediation, okay? And I feel that very strongly. The second house with Taurus, that's definitely your assets being um, kind of looked at here. Somebody's like a fine tooth comb looking and comparing assets here. Let's see what's going on in this third house because we definitely have something that is not working. Did one flip? No, okay. Definitely have something that's not working. I do feel like you will get a job for some of you. Um, you have a mother that may employ you or reach out to, to help you find employment. For some of you, this just might be an older woman that you know, aunt, grandmother, someone helping you or assisting you. There is some type of detail to um, what you're doing. Because this is the Gemini house, I'm definitely going to look into this because like I said, it's such a technology house or messages. There could be a, a certain position coming up for you that has to do with that. In the extent, it will see a little bit more. I do feel like you're maturing in the way that you communicate because your communication hasn't been effective before. So there's something that's pushing you to really put some time and effort into the way that you handle things. And I do feel like cancer, there's a maturity happening in your, in your energy in the month of May. All right, Ace of Wands, I think something, yep. All right, so we have the fourth house. Um, there's change, see, opportunity. So there is going to be a change, especially home. Some of you guys even might move. And you might not be thinking you want to move, but this move may be a good thing for you. It actually might open up some doors and you're just like, oh, shit, I didn't know that this was actually going to set this, the, this kind of... Um, thing for me to move along. So uh, you got a big change here. You might not like it at first, 
but you got change. For some of you, I do see pregnancy because I have the Ace of Wands, the World card, and the Star here, okay? And for some of you, I do feel like there's pregnancy here. Somebody could be getting pregnant in the month of May because they just have the energy of it and the huge changes coming in. So we will definitely look more into that in the extended. Let's see what's going on with this World card here. Lots of concerns in the house. All right, so we got a lot of concerns. Definitely achievements. So I don't want you guys to get too freaked out, but in the extent, it will go a little further as we have the world card and we have um, the message of concern card coming out. So there is something um, changing when it comes to either your status romantically. Um, this could be just you being known and all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, where did all these likes come from? How do these people like, you know what I mean? It's like, oh wait, I'm getting a lot more attention than what I need. Um, Virgo, okay, Virgo placement, mature man and great fortune. See, you and somebody else, you definitely have someone you've already dealt with, a mature woman, mature man. There's somebody here that I feel like has a lot of love for you. You have a lot of love for them. And I feel like you two might realize that you still want a chance again, or you still want to, um, try again. You know, there's this maturity level happening within you both. And you might just come to this uh, conclusion, like, you know what, I actually do want you, you know what I mean? Like maybe we can make this work now. We're, we're, we're mature now. We've grown now. So there's a restoration and a little bit of a reconciliation energy here for some of you. Okay. Now, I kind of skipped one part and I forgot. Sorry, you guys. I said if you were dealing with an Aries, if you're dealing with a Taurus, I do feel like there's movement. But unfortunately, you guys don't move that far because you constantly keep going back and forth with your energy. If you're dealing with a Gemini, the Gemini, I feel like either they have a mother that is always in the fucking business or this person tends to just focus on work versus focusing on their what's going on between you and this person. If you're dealing with another cancer, I feel like this person wants to move forward. There's big changes coming for you too. And I do feel like there's this huge passionate opportunity for you. If you're dealing with a Leo, I do feel like there, there either could be the ending of you and the Leo, or there could be this brand new start with you and the Leo. We definitely will be clarifying that in the extended. If you're dealing with a Virgo, reconciliation, somebody has matured now and somebody is on a different level, okay? Great fortune if you should choose the Virgo. All right, see, we, we have this journey you've been going through, especially when it comes to relationships. So some of you guys are going away from the, the idiocracy and going into a better time. And some of you are just still on your journey when it comes to relationships. There's so much you don't see yet. It's crazy. And I know you're cancer and you're all uh, connected, but there's so much cancer that you don't see coming, okay? let Allow yourself to receive what's coming to you. This is a beautiful journey. You've been on it. Some of you guys have been on this journey for like 10 years already. Um, so there's a lot to see. And especially if we're looking at a court case, um, I do feel like whatever's going on is going to take a while. This journey card is a, a, a length of time. So this is not going to be something that's going to be handled right now. And that's what you don't see. Um, and if you're dealing with the Libra, I do feel like this person um, is going on like a spiritual uh, revelation of sorts. This person is going through a lot. Sorry, y'all. Camera does that from time to time. Um, so just know that if it is a Libra, um, I do feel like the journey is not over, but there's so much you guys may end up going into a separation because of just the nature of the energy. Um, in the Scorpio house, when we're looking at this, um, there's a lot of thoughts of whys. Um, why did this end? Why did this happen? Uh, why did I go through this? And I want you to know the, the Wheel of Fortune tells us it's not always just karma related and you owe this. Sometimes life is just up and down. Sometimes life hits us when we're, we're not ready. And so spirit is telling you like, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to overthink about it. Okay. I do feel like if you're dealing with a Scorpio, this person is thinking about you very strongly. Okay. Not making no moves. Just thinking about you, okay? 
All right. In the Sag placement, I feel, again, I feel like you're not talking to someone. You could be dealing with a Sagittarius that you're not talking to. Um, I do feel like this person uh, could be a little snobbish. Okay. Or you could be the one that's the snob. There is somebody who's just like, I'm good. I, I really feel like somebody is just like, I'm good. I do feel like you may have cut your connection so that you can get yourself together and so that you can work on yourself. If this is about you, Cancer, I feel there's a level up in your energy. If this is about a Sag that you're doing, this person has leveled up their energy. I just can't read it no other way with the 12. That's like the hangman energy. Somebody has changed their perspective about things. And because it's the privileged lady, they are elevated in their energy. It doesn't matter masculine or feminine, okay? Um, all right, career. Oof, we got the lovers that jumped out and we have the high honors. So elevated energy when it comes to Capricorn. Now, um, let me just look, because if you're dealing with the Capricorn, this is definitely confirming that this person is your twin flame, okay? Um, the high honors is this is an elevated soulmate that you're dealing with here. Um, now, for some of you, the reason why your career didn't work out is because Spirit says you have a purpose here. You're not supposed to work no average job. And I don't want to say average to demean anybody's workforce energy. I mean your purpose. You could be a nurse and that's your purpose. You can be a firefighter and that's your purpose. You can be a social worker and that's your purpose. You're supposed to be in your purpose, not the nine to five. I hate my job and I'm just showing up for my paycheck. That's what I mean. Spirit is telling you, you are a divine feminine or a divine masculine in a dynamic and you came to make changes and you came to change the people that you touch, not necessarily change the whole world, but the people that you touch. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, in the Aquarius house, we've got the main female in poverty. So I do feel like, um, I feel like someone is your friend. They like you though. I feel like someone is liking, oh, this is going to get on my nerves. I feel like someone likes you and I feel like someone feels very lost without you. You know, I feel like that someone really is feeling the kind of setback. Okay. Um, sorry. I swear I'm going to invest in another camera. I swear I'm going to do it. So anyway, I'll keep talking while, while this is determining what the fuck it wants to do with life. <laughs> so yeah. Sorry, y'all. I can't pause while I'm recording, so I have to handle it because it's not... And we're back. All right. Y so again, with the Aquarius energy in that placement, I do feel like you're lost. Even if it, if it is about your life, I feel like you've kind of run out of ideas. You have a little bit of a lack energy coming in. So be careful with that because I feel like you could be like, I don't know what else to do. And I'm just kind of in this energy. You have all these like worries that are building up. Try to get out of that energy and reach out to people who have your back that can assist you. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't wait to the last minute to ask for help. Um, you know, it's not that you're being a burden. Just if you need help and assistance, I'm here and reach out. 
Um, but if you're dealing with an Aquarius, I do feel like this person has a lot of love for you, but unfortunately it just feels like a lot of loss right now between you two. I am going to clarify all of these in the extended as well because of just, just how it is. Okay. It just looks like it's a lot of stuff got to go in. All right. All right. So this justice card, toil and labor and a gift. So even though we got toil and labor, which is a lot of hardships, spirit says you will be okay at the end of it. So um, we do have to pay our prices, no matter how small or how big our karma is, we do always have to pay our prices. And that's just kind of the end of that. There's nothing, excuse me, there's nothing we can do to not pay the price. Um, but what you don't see is you will be okay at the end of the day. We'll still look into it just to see what else comes out with that justice card and the extended. So your overall energy of the month, some of you got an ally, a wealthy man. I'm telling you, some of you got a wealthy man around you that is here to help you, is here to assist you, Cancer. You could be the wealthy man, Cancer, if you're a masculine watching this. And your money is going to get right. You are going to be wealthy. You are going to be okay. Now, if this is a person coming in to help you, lean on this person and allow them to assist you so you could put some shit into place. All right? So that's what I got for you guys um, on your May reading. If you think you want to hear more, go ahead and click the link in the description and follow me to the extended to see how all this transpires for you. As always, sending you love and light. Light and love until next time. Bye.